Welcome back to Nerd Wars, and you definitely guessed this one, and I also predicted this one as it happened. I said, please, please, Rachel Zegler, open your big stupid mouth, please, please. And then a few hours after that, I saw some articles. Hmm, I'm like, that's weird, that must be an old, no. Rachel Zegler opened her big mouth. When did this come out? Oh, like right when I was saying she needed to open her big mouth. <laughs> yes, yes. Rachel Zegler went and opened her big mouth and reinvented Snow White and Juliet and facing off against toxic Disney fans. Toxicity. Oh, I might not have mentioned this, but Variety. This is them with Rachel Zeg complaining about the toxic fans. And then they brought us today, Toxic Fandom, how Hollywood is battling fans who are just out for blood so here i am evil youtuber out for blood i want to suck your blood and call i've watched women get torn down my whole life and yeah you're in hollywood <laughs> they treat women real nice like around there i'm shocked spoiler alert i die she's juliet romeo and juliet if you look at the promo video it's so woke i'm pretty sure there's a they them in there as well don't you dare call her a dei hire you have to forgive the 23 year old actress she's only 23 oh my god think about how stupid you were at 23 for giving away the ending to her next project but to be fair it's been four we don't care it's not 1937 anymore snow brown slash juliet everybody Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. They're sticking to the original text. 100% iambic pentameter, bro. It's Shakespeare. <laughs> but super duper diverse. Rachel Zegler was plucked from her life as a high schooler and handpicked by Steven Spielberg to play Maria in his 2021 remake of West Side Story. Sounds like quite a lot of privilege there, Rachel Zegler. How did that West Side Story do? Oh, it made 74 million, you say, and the budget was, ooh, 100 million. So what do we do, kids? We half this bad boy, we'll call it 35 mil, and then we double this bad boy and we call it 200 mil, and we'll be nice and we'll say 150 million plus lost. <laughs> Great debut there, Rach. Zegler has become one of the decade's shiniest new stars because we forced her on you. If you ask an AI what is the most Woke company on Earth, it's Disney. She's appeared in comic book adventures, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, didn't see it, and headlined a major franchise. Well, the, like, reboot, was it the prequels or, yeah, the prequel reboots-ish? I mean, major franchise. How did those do? Shazam, Fury of the Gods, 132 million. Oh no, production budget, 125 million. So we'll call it 225 total and 65. So what's that, like 160? We'll call it another 150 million plus loss. But what about the Hunger Games spinoff? I'm sorry, major franchise. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes? Am I pronouncing that right? Definitely did not see this one. 350 mil. All right, so cut that in half. 175 mil. They had to have done that, right? You had to have. $100 million production budget. Oh, whoopsie daisies. So that's losing some money or breaking even. You know, Rach, one of these days, maybe you'll make a movie that actually makes money. And despite all these failures, you keep being given roles for some reason. One could say maybe it's because you're a DEI hire being forced on us. It's Hollywood, baby. Oh no, I'm being a toxic Disney fan. You're no Star Wars fan in my mind. But Zegler's meteoric rise that we forced on you has come with strings attached. For as long as she's been famous, she's been the subject of ruthless and relentless criticism by evil YouTubers. It began innocently enough with petty jokes about her theater kid energy. We Weird. But as Ziegler's fame increased, the complaints against her grew more sinister. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Everyone's mean to her and they called her a DEI hire. And there's death threats on account of it being the internet. First time. Being famous isn't for the faint of heart. Yeah, it's 2024. You think being Hollywood famous is being famous? Try being a famous YouTuber. Someone that people actually care about. Oh my God, she can't stand it. She can't stand Hollywood in LA. She's one of us, guys. I don't believe you. It's not until you have to go around the world filming in different cities that you realize how grateful you are for the diversity of New York. When I came home from my year in Europe, going to my bodega where people speak in Spanish to me, you're in Europe. Have you tried going to Spain in Europe? I hear some of them speak Spanish. And then she starts giggling. Blah, blah, blah. It's totally cool that Snow White is now Snow Brown. Racist. Get over it. She was my mommy's favorite princess, and my grandma said that Cleopatra was black, so now we have Snow Brown. Bigots? What do you mean by that? The script supervisor wept upon hearing her singing voice. I hate musicals so much, I just watched Joker 2. I was... 
I can't do a review. It'd just be yelling, oh my god. I think I might have to watch Snow White. I can't do the fucking musicals. Oh my god. He also has an inherent grace, poise, and goodness that reminds me so much of what is essential to Snow White. Yeah, I fucking bet. So Ziegler doesn't bother trying to understand why it's so hard for some of those diehard Disney adults to picture a Latina in their beloved princess's shoes because it's Snow White. Moana live action, is she gonna be Latina now? <laughs> I'm totally not fan baiting you right now. Ooh, skin as white as snow, you say. Source material matters? So the new origin, it fell back to another version that was told in history where she survived a snowstorm that occurred when she was a baby. And so the king and queen decided to name her Snow White to remind her of her resilience. She's brave and true and fair doesn't mean beautiful. It means she's a leader like her father once. She's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be and the leader that her late father told her that she could be if she was fearless, fair, brave, and true. Shut up! Shut up! Also, Black Little Mermaid don't need no prince saving her shit. Why would people be angry about these things? Weird, weird. That mean things about the prince because she don't need no prince. She's a strong, independent woman with three cats. Overnight, online trolls took shots at Zegler's disdain for the animated classic, deeming her unworthy of portraying the OG Disney heroine. What is this shot? What are you doing? You look like Gladriel fighting Sauron. Beep, boop. Rule of the fates, beep boop, I stab at you, Sarah. Can't wait to hear her singing voice. I believe that women can do anything. Well, they can't really win sports anymore. Sorry about that, girls. I also believe that they can do everything. All right, how about making me a sandwich? <laughs> what she meant to convey that is that Snow White wants romance, but has other goals too. She just like wants to finish college and then like maybe travel around Europe for a little while and then go back to her bodega where she can speak Spanish. People just had a willful misunderstanding of her comments. I've had to watch the clips. I had to rewatch the clips. There's plenty of context and girl, you done goofed and you look like a crazy person while doing it. But it's par for the course. She's watched women get torn down their whole lives, her whole career. You've got to do better, Senator. Watch it in an election that's upcoming. Oh my God. We're going to witness that for a long time, I fear, <laughs> because Kamala's going to lose. Sometimes it can feel like we're going back to making America great again. I certainly felt that way when that was happening. You're fired. Yeah. You give them a lot of power by taking a social media break. You give us a lot of power when you open your big stupid mouth for me to make YouTube videos about. And of course, logging off would also make it harder to speak up for the causes she cares about, such as freeing Palestine. And this is when her publicist explained to her that she needed to act normal very briefly. Segler finds marriage and motherhood to be compatible with her feminist persona, assuming they don't murder it in the womb. The idea of her own private fairy tale is what keeps her feet on the ground. And I just wanted to throw up. Tears start springing up, sorry. <laughs> he swallows and speaks through it. It's what kept me from doing anything stupid, like saying hashtag free Palestine on my promotional tweets. <laughs> there have been times where I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Honestly, considering how much money you've lost studios, you should probably consider that. She wants to buy a house and have a white picket fence. She's normal, guys. She swears. How about new? She's very unlikable. She will doom Snow White. She's a generational talent and one with such a huge heart. I'm glad that she has people around her that lift her up. Guessing you are related to her. Go woke, go broke, get lost, Miss Z Ms. Zegler, thank you. It's no longer 1937. She's tedious, better go away quietly before everyone tired of her. All of her movies have been flops, accurate. Snow White would be no different, accurate. And with the budget they're cooking up, we can have a Marvel's, like the Flash level flop. We're talking like 200 plus mil, getting to the 250 mil loss range. Spoiler, no one wants to watch a movie with her in it. Stop trying to make her happen, she's awful. I can handle things, I'm smart! Not like everybody says! And just in time, the next day, toxic fandom from Variety. How Hollywood is battling fans who are just out for blood from social media boot camps to super fan focus groups. So what What happened? What? What's this controversy that just happened that made them have to write this toxic fandom article? Scrolling down, scrolling down, August 28th. August 20th, Amanda Stenberg did an eight and a half minute video after finding out that her show had been canceled. Thank God, and don't get me started on the act like, oh my, and Joker 2, Rings of Power season finale, and Agatha. Oh, it's not a huge shock for Stenberg. They, them. We started experiencing a rampage of, I would say, hyper conservative bigotry and vitriol. 
prejudice, hatred, and hateful language towards us. Oh, boo-hoo. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. In other words, the Acolyte was the latest higher profile target of toxic fandom, the Acolyte. The Acolyte. So what, what I'm hearing is you had nothing to write about, so you're like, hmm, let's do some fan baiting. Relentlessly negative, often bigoted online campaign. Toxic fandoms behave reactively. Reactionaries, what? I don't know what that means, but you're reactionaries. A House of the Dragon episode featuring two female characters kissing. We like briefly mentioned it, like no one really cared. We were just like, what, why, when, what? And an episode of The Last of Us focusing on a gay couple where, yeah, that one, yeah, out of that one, people had some issues with. We're both review bombed. Okay, maybe The Last of Us, but House of the Dragon? No, you're just wrong. Dumb. People like House of the Dragon. And then, of course, we mentioned Last Jedi, The Marvels, The Boys, quote, woke garbage. Honestly, I should probably put that in my title. Oh, don't forget about Rings of Power. And oh, death threats for Leslie 2016's Ghostbusters. Real Wrath of God type stuff. Exactly. Of course, Paul Feig just had to come out and attack the fans again and blame Trump for the failure. You're fired. Yeah. Perhaps the greatest irony of this phenomenon is the disproportionate impact these toxic fandoms have relative to their actual number. You mean the customers, the people with actual money. The disproportionate impact is all you view insane people on Twitter. Toxic fandoms have grown so pernicious that they've become a fact of life for many and so powerful. We have no power, but also we're so powerful that while talent, executives, and publicists will privately bemoan the issue, fear of inadvertently triggering another backlash kept several studios from speaking for this story. Hmm, as one rep put it, it's just a lose-lose. Oh, they are learning. It's afraid. It's afraid. It's just a lose lose. Correct. And that's why you need to get Rachel Zegler to shut her big mouth. Disney, what are you doing? Those who did talk with Variety, those who aren't scared by his horrible monster YouTubers, all agreed that the best defense is to avoid provoking fandoms in the first place. Correct. Shut the fuck up. We have the money. Shut the fuck up. Give us what we want. Or we're not giving you our money. And instead of getting positive word of mouth that's free marketing, we will do the exact opposite. And then you attack us and call us names? <laughs> them fine words. And that's that's it. Just a little rings of power. That, that's it. There was nothing new. They had nothing to write. So Variety said, you know what we should do? Attack the fans. You don't hate the media enough. Tell me down below in the comments how much you hate the media. And if you think Snow White's going to lose a lot of money, make sure to hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. Oh my God, I'm going to have to watch Snow White in the theater. <laughs> I saw Joker too. <laughs> Thanks for watching and please funnel the algorithm on your way out and support the channel by becoming a YouTube member.